guys. About to run out of the house today, do some errands, and um, we I thought I'd take this opportunity to respond to Crepe Myrtle Homestead's Homesteaders tag. So I'm going to take you guys along with us and uh, answer the questions that she brought forward in this post, and we'll see how we do. So we got to run to Tractor Trailer Supply, and I don't know where else. Got to get propane tanks filled. So I'm going to do that today and see you guys in a little bit. So we got dumped on with snow yesterday. Like a lot of snow. <clears throat> I think like 12 inches or more. We got about another inch this morning, half inch or so. And yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Our, our path just to the backyard. Um, and we've got another probably two inches or more coming tomorrow. So we're going to get outside and play today too. Go redneck skiing in the backyard. That'll be fun. Don't you hate it when snow falls on your seat when you open the car door? Like the last thing that you want is a cold rear end. Okay, so question number one was, what inspired you to start homesteading? And uh, we talked about this a little bit um, in a couple of our videos. And it was really just a long journey of kind of self-discovery about the big ag food situation that's going on in the country and how not real our food actually is. And it was also a me getting lost in the corporate environment, um, kind of lost a sense of self and a sense of purpose and is what I'm doing in this everyday hectic go to work stress. It was very, very stressful environment, very politically driven and um, really left me with no energy uh, when I would get home. I found myself very depressed and I knew I personally wanted to change in my lifestyle, um, a change in what brought me joy day in and day out. And through that process, we were watching different YouTube channels and uh, just enjoying following the lifestyle that other people were living, whether it was in a off-grid living situation, whether it was um, homesteading on a small scale versus big scale, I thought of everything. I'll tell you that story another day. But anyway, it's kind of just a two, three year journey of just lifestyle evaluation. So say hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, question number two is, are you off grid or do you have some modern conveniences? We are not off grid at all. Um, We're completely on the grid, city water, Power. Um, we do have septic system. We're not connected to a city sewer system. Um, but the good thing is, is we do have wells on the property that we've yet to harness um, the water from them because they're somewhat abandoned. So we do need to do a water test. And as long as the water's good, we'll have a means to provide water for ourselves and. Uh, anytime a situation arises that we would need to, but also be able to water our garden, water our animals more efficiently um, and at less, no cost to us. So that would be a good thing. Um, we do, however, though, have an off-grid property, completely off the grid, over on the west side of the state. Yeah, it's in a beautiful forest called the Manistee National Forest. Um, we're surrounded by, I think, close to 4,000 acres of forest. Um, and we have a river that runs through the property. 
that provides our water. Um, we do have the ability to hook up propane for stove or refrigerator refrigeration needs. Um, we do a lot of our cooking though over at the campfire while we're there. We have tons of woods, being that we're in the forest, so we have endless supply of wood. What else do we have there besides that? Um, oh, the propane also provides, um, there are some propane lights that are run through half of the cabin. So that does give us a means for lights, but we also have our kerosene oil heaters, or oil lamps and everything there. So in a terrible situation, we, we know how to take care of ourselves. So I'm not concerned about that. Um, do you garden? So the next question is, do you garden? If so, is it raised bed or in the ground? And um, so this will just be my third year gardening with any success, I should say. And ours are started out the majority raised bed gardens. This last year we did, because we, at least me, I don't know, Todd, if you felt this way, I really felt like we had good soil in our new homestead. It was sandy, loamy, I guess in certain areas. So in the front half of the property, it really looked like good soil. So I wanted to try two beds in, straight in the ground. So all we did was we just did an initial till. We amended the, the row area with compost, some um, organic fertilizer to get some nutrients in there. And one row I did my corn, pumpkins, and beans. And the other section I just did sunflowers um, as a test to kind of really drive those roots down and make sure that we had good drainage in that space. And it worked really, really well. We had excellent corn production um, and excellent sunflowers. So I kept those beds going this year. I'll do the corn again in the same bed. And then the, where the sunflowers were, we, that's where we actually planted our garlic. And this year, I'm also gonna add a third gardening style, which is the Ruth Stout method where you just lay old hay and straw, and as that decomposes, it builds the soil. And that's where I'm gonna do my potatoes this year. So it's fun to have a variety, a variety of things going on. Uh, I will tell you square foot method works extremely well for us, and we love it. It takes up less space. You can get significant amount of production and yield out of it, so that's what we like. Do I homeschool? No, I do not homeschool. We only have one daughter left in school. She's a junior, finishing up her junior year in high school. I will tell you, before I started my career, I was a stay-at-home mom for the first eight years of my children's lives, and I did try homeschooling. Um, one virtue that you must have to all you wonderful homeschooling mothers is something called patience, which I do not have. My first child was an excellent student, super easy to homeschool. My second child is just like me. <laughs> Honestly, we're a spitting image of each other, personality, everything. And I was a challenge when I was a young student and he was a significant challenge as a young student. So um, it just worked out that as he was, would have been entering kindergarten was when I entered the workforce. So. Um, yeah, we, we chose to just go ahead and go with the regular public school program. How many animals do we have? Well, again, another tricky question because I think if you homestead, you're, you're going to see ebbs and flows of the animals on your property, at least in my interpretation of how we homestead. So right now, we only have our laying hens, and that's all that we have. But last year, we did raise our own turkeys, our own broiler chickens and we raised ducks to harvest. Um, I would say accidental ducks to harvest because we bought those ducks for eggs and they turned out to be all boys and I wasn't having any freeloaders on the property. So this year though the we'll do the same situation minus the ducks. We'll raise our turkey, we'll raise our broiler meat chickens, we will also um, be adding pigs to the farm and we have goats coming to the farm, um, which will be our future dairy 
source, hopefully if it all works out. Um, so that's what we've got. And the uh, next question is, do you prefer milk goat versus goat, or no, milk goat? Do you prefer goat milk or cow's milk? I will tell you, I'm just not a milk drinker, so I don't know that I necessarily have a preference. What I want the milk for, so my kids are when they come home, so they'll probably be the ones to tell you if they have a preference. <clears throat> but what I want milk for are things like yogurt and cheese, because we're big, I'm a big yogurt eater if I have it. And I much prefer real yogurt to the store-bought Dan and stuff. Um, I like the runnier yogurts. And Todd is a ginormous cheese eater. And so we're hoping that we'll be able to make some good cheese and butter. But I know it's gonna be tricky to make butter from goat's milk, at least from what I've heard, but we're gonna see if we can figure that out. Okay. Um, does your homestead make money? If so, how? Our homestead doesn't necessarily bring money in. Our goal of our homestead is to decrease the amount of money going out to sustain ourselves. So the fact that we raised our own meat, I haven't bought an egg since last July. Um, pretty soon we'll have our own dairy. We won't be buying the yogurts and the cheeses. So that's really the goal of our homestead is not necessarily to produce money. It would be good if I could cover like cost of feed. Um, there is a, what do you call it, honey? When the, a saturation of, we live in farm country. So there is a huge saturation when it comes to fresh eggs for sale. So to even try to get in that market would be tough. Um, maybe once we have our own honeybees, that might be a good source if we are very successful at that because um, that is a little less saturated in our area. So we'll see. What advice would you give to new homesteaders? Um, I think you hear this advice a lot and that is um, I guess if you're somebody that is a planner like me, do your research, research, research. You can't do enough of that. But don't overanalyze the situation either, meaning the move to start homesteading. Start where you are now and practice. Practice those skills of those things that you want to be able to do when you have a larger homestead and that's what we did before so before we ever owned this property we practiced square foot gardening we practiced canning and we felt like we had built um, some successful skills that we could take with us um, the second one is once you get there take it slow so progressively mature on your homestead and another thing that Todd and I did that was, I think, very helpful, at least for us as a couple, is make that list of what your priorities are. And then you can also prioritize that by cost and time, your time to invest in that. And it'll help you manage exactly what you tackle as you start homesteading. Um, and also help you measure your success as you grow in mature homesteading. Um, and secondly, if you're doing it with your spouse, try to stay on the same page. And that's not always easy when you both have different ideas of what you want to accomplish and the timing that you want to accomplish it, but just always talk through those goals, talk through your ambitions and your desires, and that would probably be my biggest advice. Also, if you can find great communities like we have right here today on YouTube, develop those relationships. Develop some key and critical relationships with people that you respect what they're doing, um, 
they look like they're having success. They've shown you beginning to end the process of start to finish of different projects or different initiatives on their homestead um, and build relationships with them that you can ask questions and get true mentoring from. Um, that's another good recommendation. And then lastly, don't compare yourself to Mr. and Mrs. Jones because everyone does homesteading differently. Everyone has different goals and desires of what they want to accomplish. And the way that Leah at Crepe Myrtle Homestead does her homestead may not be how I want to homestead. And, and that's okay. That's completely okay. Um, so it just does best for you if you know what your own personal desires and goals are and you stay focused on that. So that was the homesteader's tag, the 1870s response. So I hope you guys all have a super great day. We're here at Tractor Trailer Supply loading up on our propane needs. I don't even know why we need propane. I know Todd bought a new propane heater for his garage, so that could be what he's getting it for. And we're also going to our cabin in like a month, so I can't wait to take you guys there with us. Other than that, that's it from 1870s Homestead. Hey, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. We love having you guys here with us. It's so much fun. We're having a blast. Love all the comments and the community that we're building. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys. Hey, guys. Oh. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I got tagged by Crepe Myrtle Homestead in a uh, homesteader's tag. It's like so many questions um, that she came up with on kind of why we homestead and what homesteading um, practices we or principles we apply. Well, this is stupid.